Uh, so first off, I'm using Photoshop, but I'm trying to kind of keep everything as basic as humanly possible. Uh, so it can apply across numerous different art programs. Um, a tablet is recommended, but not required. I know some artists who can do some crazy stuff with a mouse and a keyboard. So don't think that just because you don't have a tablet, you can't start fiddling around doing digital art. Um, some of this will also transfer over to uh, tablet-based or portable-based uh, art programs such as Procreate and uh, Adobe Fresco, Clip Studio. I do actually have Clip Studio open down here and I'll probably swap over, swap between the two periodically. Uh, everything has their pros and cons. So, I mean, get comfortable with one and you can jump to the others without too much issue. Just depends mostly on what you want to do. I find Clip Studio is better for more solid line art, whereas I use Photoshop more for painterly style, which is kind of more more my specialty, more what I enjoy doing. Uh, Procreate, I find, works really well for pencil and charcoal, so again, just fiddle around, get good at, uh, at whichever one you want, and you can jump into any, which other, any other one. There is always a learning curve anytime you do make a jump, so don't let that ever kind of uh, put you out too much. And for anyone going from traditional to digital, uh, let me just tell you right off the bat, every single one of us, any single fantastic piece that you see that's done all in digital art, we all struggled with the jump. <laughs> it was, it's, it's something that happens to all of us. It's you're learning a new tool. So yeah, it's have fun. Uh, so right off the bat, we're going to jump into our create new screens. Ignore my tablet icon while it jumps all over the place. Uh, and then you get this fancy little window. So your document type has a couple pre-saved uh, pre formats. So web will give you your your size of your canvas, your resolution, US papers, your standard 8.5 by 11. Um, these ones are ones that I have saved and we'll talk about saving presets after. Uh, you can have film and video. Um, some programs, Photoshop, will allow you to do animation. Uh, Clip Studio also allows you to do animation. I'm not entirely sure on GIMP or Paint Tool Sci. Uh, for a couple of free options for people who don't necessarily have the funds to pay. Um, iconography, so that's making your little your little pixels for iOS and Samsung and mostly your phones. Then you have your art and illustration. Um, I'm going to go to custom for now. So you'll see size. Um, this one's blocked out just because it I don't have have it set to a okay this has to be set for an iPhone this has to be set for a document uh, and you'll notice in some of these options it gives you iPhone Android Microsoft Surface makes everything really super easy for you already I'm just gonna go with custom so it you can either select your width and your height in pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters. I normally go by either inches or pixels. Uh, inches is kind of my standard. Um, lots of US folk, you guys will also probably use inches more often than not. Uh, generally people UK, well everywhere else in the world except for US and Canada will probably use centimeters. Canada jumps between inches and centimeters. Um, and then pixels per inch is your resolution. So you'll hear terms thrown around a lot uh, like DPI or PPI. So what DPI means is dots per inch. DPI is used for print. 
So when you print out a piece of paper, it's, uh, it's putting one little dot on the piece of paper, and it wants to know how many dots are in that square inch. Uh, pixels per inch is what your screen resolution is at. So whenever you make anything for the web, you're always going to want to put it in pixels per inch. Um, for printing, uh, generally, if you are printing on something textured, you shouldn't need to go past 200. Um, a lot of printers will say 300 DPI or PPI or DPI. They generally trans out this, translate out the same for if you're printing on something glossy, because there's no texture to hide the, uh, the loss in resolution. For me, what I normally go with is uh, I go with a 15 by 15 at 200. Uh, I know typically when I print something, I'm printing on 11 by 17. So 15 by 15 is a really, really easy uh, easy size to cut cut files at uh, but it lets me kind of work start working in either a uh, portrait or a landscape format so I can work either which way and it fills my entire computer screen I quite like that <laughs> uh, you can go white black you can pick whatever background color you want if you want to have a red background you can totally do that um, I normally set it to background color, which I have at a 50% gray. I just find 50% gray lets me, it shows my colors a little bit easier. I don't get eye strain from seeing black on white or white on black. Uh, everything just looks a little bit, it, it's just easier for me to look at. So I normally just put it at the 50% or I put it at white and then I paint spill when I get into it. Um, your advanced color profile, uh, this I don't normally mess around with, but it would depend if you wanted to get really fi finicky. It's uh, what mostly what you think what image it's or what screen it's going to be viewed on the most. I'm using my Max color uh, color monitor, which is RGB working RGB. So now, if you kind of figured out what you want, or if you haven't, uh, you can always save your preset. What would you like to name this preset? You include resolution, color mode, bit depth, background contents, the works, so that way you never have to do this again. Uh, you'll see I have it for my 15 by 15 inch, and it also shows my color mode and my 8 bit. I have my comic page for my double and my single for print files, which is 7 10 by 10.5, a resolution of 600, because I like painting very fine detail, but <laughs> that's me. Uh, as soon as you get past 200, your computer is going to be very likely to chug. Um, if you're on an iPad or Samsung, or you're using a program like Procreate, uh, it will automatically only allow you to put a certain amount of layers once you go, when you raise your resolution. Um, I have already had Procreate crash on me when I tried to put it at 15 inch by 15 inch at 300 DPI, so, or uh, pixels per inch. So, they, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend a crazy, crazy high one on that. But I mean, hey, if you could get it to work, you can get it to work. So we're going to go right in. And for people who viewed my stream before, you'll notice that this looks totally different from how it normally looks. And that's because I just set it to the default screen that shows up, the default layout, um, just to kind of start showing you how to mess around with how to lay out your program. And ignore me while I look at my notes so I don't miss stuff. Uh, before we get into moving things around, we're going to save. Now you might have noticed on the screen before this that it gave you the option to name name things as you go. Uh, 
if you are good at that, great. I am so, so not good at that. And I'm actually just going to create a new folder. I'm going to name this Digital Art 101. And then watch as my both my stream freeze a little bit and my computer decides it's going to take a second. Okay, so now I've got something open for Digital Art 101. I am just going to name this part one. Oh, yeah, okay, whatever, you're fine. Sometimes files ask for permissions. I have currently have my Adobe Creative Suite closed, or my Creative Cloud. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't make my computer chug too much. That was the reason why I closed it in the first place. I'm going to name this part one. Layouts. And I'm just going to open that screen again. The hotkey for that is Command Shift S, or for Windows users, Control Shift S, which is pretty standard across most most programs. And you'll see down here we have the option to save in a bunch of different file formats. So you have Photoshop, large doc document format, BMP, lots and lots and lots of different ones. Uh, Photoshop if this is what you're using, will probably be your default, which is a .psd file. A .psb file is anything over 2 gigabytes, so that is an obscenely large file. I hope you never <laughs> reach that, because uh, as somebody who has, it takes a lot out of your computer. <laughs> uh, then you've also got your JPEG is going to be another standard one that you see. PNG and TIFF. Um, Photoshop, PSD formats, a lot of other programs use them. Let me open uh, Clip Paint really quick. And I'm going to open a new... You'll see this one is very similar. So you got your width, your height and pixels, your resolution, paper color, whether you want a template. It's got all sorts of different different options for you to choose from. Uh, Clip Studio Paint also gives you the option of choosing illustration, comic boards. Uh, I believe this is comic board, or, oh, show all comic settings, okay. So yeah, I learned something new even even when I'm doing these. And animation settings. Uh, so very similar to Photoshop. <coughs> and I'm going, I'm normally an illustrator, so I'm going to put it on illustration. I'm going to put this at 200. And is this going to let me change it? Okay, well, I know if you times 15 by 200, you will get 4,000. So I know I want 4,000 by 4,000. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit, as you can tell. Okay, so I have my file. And I'm going to either command s or command shift s since this hasn't been saved previously and clip studio paint up here tells you nice little hey your license needs to be verified after an x number of days and ignore me while i crack open a soda can and the pinwheel of death <laughs> i've got my fingers crossed that having both both programs open isn't going to cause an issue Oh, well, I heard my music stop, but that might have been from, oh, it's trying, it's trying so, so very hard. There we go. Uh, and for those of you using Mac, you'll find that sometimes it starts chugging at very for very strange reasons. Uh, 
that's just because it in the background it wants to go through every single one of these files and make sure it can line it up for you as opposed to just showing you an icon and letting you click through it it wants to archive everything uh, so that would be why that that happens and I'm going to name this one part one clip don't know if I'll do anything with these files but we shall see and you'll see under the file type we have a lot of the same options we have clip studio format uh, BMP JPEG PNG, TIFF, Targa, and we also have the Photoshop documents. Um, be a little bit careful when you're jumping between programs. If you're opening a, uh, or if you're saving a clip paint file into PSD and then opening it in Photoshop, each of these programs do something a little bit different and they might not have the same tools. Uh, so one thing I know that gets me all the time if I'm transferring from Clip Paint. Clip Paint has a fancy little uh, perspective tool which lets you draw lines all in a perspective. It's super helpful for backgrounds but it's going to delete that and you have to redo it every time you port it into Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop, if you type something out in text and transfer it over to Clip Paint, you can't edit that text again. It's going to do what's called rasterizing the font, and I'll talk about raster uh, a little bit later, and what the heck that is, because most people... <laughs> if you get uh, a designer, a graphic designer, and a digital artist in the same room, there will be constant yelling of raster, vector, raster, vector. Anybody who's ever been in a room with me and my friend from Paper Lime Creations, uh, graphic design studio, you, <laughs> you will hear us arguing about raster and vector nonstop. Um, but so there's, there's that. When you save it as one of the other formats, such as JPEG, these do not include things that Photoshop uses, such as layers. It takes everything and it smushes it all together and then you can't edit it from, you can't edit individual layers after that. So before you save it to a JPEG, make sure you have your Photoshop file saved. And then the other one that helps out a lot of people, the hotkey for your rulers is Command R or control R for Windows. Um, and then this gives you your inches, so you can see I've got 0 to 15 inches and 0 to 15 inches. And then if you click and drag on your ruler and drag out, you can create guides for your page. These do not show up in print. They only show up to be used as a tool for you. Uh, your guides might look a little bit different than mine because you can change their appearance in Photoshop's preferences. Uh, I'm not sure, again, about the other programs, because typically this is the one I use for painting and printing. Uh, and you'll see it snaps snaps to things. So it snaps to the edge of the grid. If I'm going to create a new layer really quick, and I'll tell you what the shortcuts for that are in a second. Oops, let me, let me make a square. Nice, simple, easy square you'll see that these guides, they want to snap to the edges of that that object. Um, to turn that off, it's under your view, and then your snap, and you can choose what it snaps to. Grids, layers, document bounds. So document bounds is your edges, layers, because this shape is the only thing I have on this layer, it's considering this the edge of the layer. Um, I don't have my grid or my slices turned on. Those are more for if you're doing web design. Um, or I personally use them when I do my web comic and I have 100 panels laid out and I only want, I want each individual panel to be saved as its own separate file. So that's what slices are for. And those we will go over a little bit more in uh, the next lesson for tools and how what they're used for. That's your 
This is your fun little toolkit. You get very familiar with it very quickly. So I'm just going to delete that. And then to keep from getting blinded. And I work a little bit fast because I'm so used to doing this. But X uh, is your swap between your background and your mid-ground color. In Clip Paint, X will swap between your background, your mid-ground, and your transparent. Or it should swap into your transparent. Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Undo that. Um, and undo is going to be another thing you're probably going to use very often, is your Command Z or your uh, Control Z. And then to redo is Command Shift Z or Control Shift Z. Um, I don't use grids very often, but if you ever need to use uh, need to use a grid, it's pretty much your predetermined spacing. Um, so this is good for pixel art or if you're doing a map, anything like that, you can use that for this. I'm going to get rid of my grid. You'll see Photoshop helpfully tells you what the hotkeys are. Since I don't use grids very often, I don't know the hotkeys right off the top of my head. Um, the other thing that is very helpful is guide layouts. So if you are doing printing, this can help you take care of your bleed. And bleeds I'll go over in a second as well. Um, but you can say, hey, I want this top line to be 0.25 inches from the edge. And on the left, I want it to be, we'll say one inch. And on the bottom, 0.25, and on the right, one inch. Definitely helps you make all of your, uh, all of your uh, panels, if you're doing panels. It helps you keep track of the edge of your canvas. You can separate columns and how much the gutter is, how the space in between. Uh, you can do rows, and then if you know this is something that you're going to use a lot, you can save your preset. Uh, I don't know where my comic one went, because I actually did have one for my comic. Uh, comic pages in print, you generally will have your live area, which is the area you don't want any of your text to drift outside of, um, because it's going to end up off-center when they print it and cut it, and then it's going to have your bleed lines or your cut lines, which is they want to print past that, so when they cut it, everything is always going to be centered where they need it to be. Um, if you do not add bleed when you're doing prints, your printer will either charge you more for it, or they, <laughs> well, they will give you uh, instead of an 11 by 17, you'll get a 12 by 18 with a white strip on either side that you then have to cut yourself, and it is very, 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 very difficult to cut <laughs> perfectly on the edge of your pixels on a physical piece of paper. Trust me, I've done it, and it's terrible. And I have a pretty steady hand. <laughs> uh, so, say I was doing, I'm just going to do image. Canvas size, so this is where you can edit your canvas without editing the image itself. It will not stretch and distort your image, it's just cutting cutting the edges to their new size. Uh, and I'm going to go 11 by 17. And it shows you, oh hey, if you've already got an image on there, you can say, I want all of this top part to show and I want you to extend the bottom and cut into the sides, or I want you to only show this corner extend to the bottom, and I want you to cut in this way. So here's my new my new layout. If I sent this to a printer, uh, well, I, I know my printer personally. She might throttle me. <laughs> she knows where I live. Uh, so you always... 
oh, actually, image size works. Uh, so image size will take what's your what you've already painted in here. Let's uh, give me some colors that I can see. So that way I can show you exactly what's going to happen. Don't take my word on it. Try it out. See what happens. Preferably not on a finished piece. So if I go image size and say I want it to be a little bit. Let's go with 10. Let's go 10 by 17 or something. Or 10 by 10 by 18. So when you do image size, you see how it distorts your lines? A lot of the time, that's not what you want. So you can go image size, and let's go 11.5, because I normally do a certain amount of bleed on either side, 0.25 inches. Um, and then let's go 17.5. So then as you can see, when you change your canvas, your image doesn't stretch at all. It's just your canvas changes. Now I can go new guide layout and there automatically are my bleed lines. So I will draw or paint over top. Oh, I can tell I've still got my snapping on because I'm snapping to my grids. Let's turn that off. So I can go past that and then when my printer has to cut my image, this little itty bitty bit is going to be cut but you will never have to worry about seeing a random white line that made it accidentally made it past. It's much easier for your printer, and you don't have to get charged six bucks for them to blow your image up a little bit. Which, I am going to say, not all printers will do that. Sometimes they just make you do the cutting yourself, and it is a pain. And then, yeah, if you wanted to, because... Now you've got this set up, you don't want to set it up every single time. Save your preset. And it will ask you, where do you want to save your new grid, grid system? Um, I have a backup automatically called Turo, where I save all my stuff and I can reload all my stuff to. And then if I ever need to reset my computer, it's all on a backup drive already. Yes, yes, yes. You can you're allowed to access that. So now that you've got your canvas set up, um I'm just going to select this all and fill with background color. Now that you got your canvas set up, you've got your edges set up. The other thing you want to make sure is your actual program is set up for you. So that's what we call workspaces, or at least Photoshop calls it workspaces. I can't remember if does Clip Paint call it workspaces? It does. Clip Paint also calls it workspaces. So as you can see, I already have this set up a certain way. Um, I set up every single one of my programs the same, so I don't have to go hunting for stuff. Does it sometimes take me a little bit when I first open up a program? Yes. Yes, it does. So right off the bat, I'm putting my tools over here. Um, I typically don't need them because I know what all my hotkeys are. If you want, you can leave them closer to wherever, wherever it works best for you. Um, I'm going to... So 3D, if you are creating a new 3D object, um, I'm not going to go too in-depth into this because it's not something that shows up in a heck of a lot of programs, and it's not something that I use as an illustrator. Uh, but you can get, uh, say, a 3D bike from somewhere and put it in there. That can definitely help you learn how to draw a bike. <laughs> you can get a 3D building. You can get uh, a character pose. Clip Studio Paint is notoriously popular for how much do I have my 3Ds? Yeah, so 3D drawing figure. I'm just going to throw him in here. 
Is it going to work? Is it going to work for me? Maybe? don't know if it's going to work for me today. Um, I might go in, I'll probably go into that in more detail later on. Uh, I believe part three is probably going to be where I go into that. Uh, actions is, say you finish your piece and you want it all to look like a uh, sepia photo. Actions are set up to automatically apply the adjustments needed to make that happen with just a click. Um, another thing that I don't typically mess with, but it's really cool if you want to give, especially if you're into photography, if you want to change something into a night scene and you think you're going to do a series of photos like that, adjustments just make it so much easier on you. Your brush settings. Now, brush settings are something I know I'm going to use, so right now I'm going to stick it over here. And same with my brushes. And you can see you can click and drag. Uh, if you think you want these both in the same panel, you can put them in the same panel. Then wherever you want your panel from that. Um, I'm going to recommend if you don't use it, just close it. If you find that you need it later, you can totally open it up back later. As you can see, things are closing and adjusting in size as I move things around. And when you move it right to the edge, you get this blue light up edge that tells you that, hey, yes, I'm going to go over here. When you get the blank screen like this, it means your brushes aren't selected, maybe. Photoshop's deciding to be a reset essentials. It's going to be, be a little bit annoying today. Which, yes, respect your program. Your program is becomes your life. There we go. Now it's showing up. Um, I have a lot of my own brushes. Photoshop allows you to put them into file folders. Uh, older versions of Photoshop, I know, do not. So don't be surprised if you're, that's just not something your program does. Uh, your brush settings, this is kind of, this is where we're going to go over this in extreme detail in part uh, either three or four. I think it's four. Part four, um, where we go through what each and every one of these does, how to make brush presets, all the fun stuff. Uh, I know where I kind of prefer my, my brush settings to be set out. Now I can already tell I don't want this. So I'm going to drag you out, and I'm going to close you. I also don't necessarily want my libraries. If I had stuff saved to the cloud, that's where this would show up. So I'm going to get rid of you. Uh, my color, I know I use my color quite a bit, so I'm going to put you over here. I don't feel like that needs to be that big. So I'm going to put that over there for now, where I've got my brushes, so I can quickly jump between clicking on my most common ones. Uh, my swatches, these are all your preset colors. Um, you can save and upload color libraries. I have a specific, there we go. <laughs> so you can see I like having my stuff laid out a very, very certain way. Um, properties, it just shows you your document properties, your width, height, uh, resolution. I believe it shows you layer properties too. Yeah, so if I create a new layer, you can set what your pixel layer properties are. X and Y is just your positioning. Old school math, if you remember your, your X and Y graphs. So your X, where it's sitting on your, on your X spectrum and on your Y spectrum. You can click and drag them if you so wish. There are much easier ways of doing that. Uh, you could tell it what the width and height of this layer is. I don't generally mess with properties in a mathematical sense. I use 
visual, so I'm looking at it and moving it around. So I'm going to close you. Uh, adjustments are something that I do use, but I don't use very often. Uh, so it's probably going to become a secondary panel to something else that I use. Layers. I know I'm going to use you. I use ton. Well, I don't use tons of layers. That's that's a little bit of a lie. I use one or two layers if I can get away with it. If I can't, especially for uh, my comic pages, yeah, you just end up with hundreds and hundreds of layers. I'm never going to close this bad boy. Uh, most digital artists will always have that quick, quick and easy to get to. Um, I'm going to throw my adjustments there because every time you click on one of these, it creates its own layer. So as you can see, a brightness contrast layer, or let's go with a curves layer. So it creates a new, a new layer for each one you click on. I'm just going to select those and delete them. Uh, to select multiple layers, just hold Shift. If you select, let me create a couple. If you select a bunch but you don't want one, just hold your Command or Control on Windows and select the ones that you don't want. And then from there, you can just hit your Delete or Backspace button. Uh, Clip Studio Paint makes you right click on things to delete them or hit your little garbage can. Uh, and I had already said properties. Yeah, I don't particularly want you. Brush settings, I know I use. So I'm going to keep you there. Paths, uh, I use paths quite a bit for making a perspective view in uh, in Photoshop, uh, but I don't necessarily need to see it all the time. I only need it for specific times, so I'm actually going to put it in this little toolbar right on the side here. Um, if you want to make your own little toolbar, because you can totally do that, you just drag your drag a bunch of your things off to the side. You can put them in bunches together, so if you find, hey, these two seem like they should go together, you can put them there. You can expand them, move it around, have it floating if you would like. Uh, if you bunch them together, you get them in tabs like this. You can also just put them side by side. Uh, I don't if I can avoid floating tabs, I tend to because I get very easily distracted. <laughs> so I tend to click and drag and it's like, oh, now all my stuff's moved. So I keep those guys off to the side. Uh, my history, I have my history set to only be 25 long. That saves a little bit on how much RAM you're using and how much your program has to remember that you've done. Uh, I find it also makes you learn how to draw and paint stuff without just mass undoing and then mass redoing and it's like yeah nope if I mess up I can only go back 25 and then I have to erase it uh, so for me that was a learning tool uh, and one that I found helped out quite a bit but this guy uh, I normally have him on my other monitor and you'll see I can't get there with my tablet because of how I have my tablet set up and my <laughs> my Max trackpad died the other day. So I can't move him right now, but I will. So I'm going to put you right here. Uh, channels is not something I use very much. So if you have, uh, say, we're just going to... Do a couple scribbles in various colors. So say you have your image. If you want to look and see what your image looks like without anything red in the spectrum, without anything green in the spectrum, 
You can turn your red back on. Or without anything blue in the spectrum. That is what that will look like. Um, RGB just refers to additive color, so your screen and your display is all in RGB color. It make, each of these pixels are mixing a red, a green, and a blue to give you the color that you want. Uh, and that I will talk about a little bit more when I go over vector, vector versus raster. But channels, yeah, you can sit there. You're fine there. So what else do we have that this default workspace didn't open? Well, we've got my adjustments over there. Uh, we've got the channels over there. Character. So character is going to refer to your text. Um, so you'll see automatically it open character and paragraph at the same time for me. I probably had them already bunched together. I don't know if Photoshop does that default or not. Um, but this is how you set up when you type out your text. So your paragraph, you can have it centered, move to the side. I'm not going to go over this too much in too detail, but I'll throw it up here because I need this for when we go over vectors. And you'll see it automatically changed my layer from your, uh, your transparent pixel look to this text to let you know that it is now a text layer. It is not a pixel layer. And I don't like this uh, multi multi thing. I want to have as much screen as I can. So I'm going to put all those together. Uh, you have your character styles, which I don't generally mess around with these, so I'm not entirely sure. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, if you have a color saved and a specific font, you can set everything up, all your sizes and everything, and have it named as, like, comic, or uh, speech bubble, or thought. Or if your character has a specific type of font, you can add that in there. Uh, and same thing with basic paragraph. I'm just going to delete these for now. Oh yeah, okay, so it shows your font family, your color, advanced character formats. Uh, so this is this is more in the graphic designer uh, world. Uh, but your height of your of each of your letter, your width of each of your letter. Um, glyphs is the symbols that show up for your fonts, so all your fun little characters, uh, and depending on which font you have selected, it'll show you all the various, and yes, letters count as glyphs. Uh, so if you ever need to find one and you're, you don't know how to make it appear, you can always find it in here, and that's okay staying there with the other ones. Instagram just kind of shows you how much RGB you have. Uh, it's going to tell me that I should adjust my color, my color settings. And I can kind of let it do that on its own. Uh, your navigator, which it opened at the same time there. This I use constantly. Um, so normally this is on my other monitor with my... Um, history, but it allows you to zoom in. Let's go to my third layer. And I can see the entire picture as I'm doing little details. So we'll say if this is a string or a necklace breaking apart. I can see if the tiny little details I'm putting into it actually matter at all in the grand scheme of things. And I can make sure if I'm working in fine detail, say on a face, that everything is still properly in perspective. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye on this. 
Uh, I have actually painted by looking at nothing but this just off to the side. It's a good little challenge. Um, and still allows you to get into fine details that you can't quite do when you have your uh, when you're zoomed out just because of pen control. It's easier to do fine details when you zoom when you're zoomed in. And do do. So I'm going to put you over here because I know I'm going to move you around later. Uh, learn was one of the. Oh, actually, I skipped a bunch. Here we go. Info. So info is the same same kind of thing as it as uh, properties. There we go. I'm sorry. Uh, it shows you how big your file size is, where everything is sitting. So this is your cursor. It shows you where your cursor is going. Again, I don't tend to work in a very mathematic way. Um, this is showing what color in CYMK and RGB your, your cursor is hovering over. So info I don't typically use, so I'm actually just going to pull it off, close it. I don't trying to think, and I don't think I've ever used it. Uh, libraries we already closed. Measurement log. Um, this is more for animation. Um, not something I've used in a very very long time, so I'd have to go through or ask a couple of my animator buddies. But you can put various frames. And create a video timeline and record how big everything is. <laughs> I don't, I, I haven't used measurement log ever, I think. Uh, normally with animation, I go with um, Adobe After Effects. There are definitely much, much, much better animation programs, uh, Flash being one of them, than there is for Photoshop. And if you saw, you can just kind of click on this and it'll automatically close it. Um, notes, you can put notes in various places and it'll put a little yellow box. You can click on the notes. I'm one of those people, I just kind of pen write my notes out on a new layer. Otherwise, I ignore or forget them all. Paragraph we had already opened. Paragraph styles, paths, uh, properties we had already closed. Styles is... There we go. So this will be a series of effects that you can add to a layer that will give it a rainbow effect. Or, oh, that one's got bevel, stroke, gradient overlay. Uh, layer styles, I will go over a little bit more in the next lesson when we do layers. But if you want to save kind of like the, where was it, the character styles. If you want to save your own custom layer styles for later, um, it works good for, say you make your, let's do a speech bubble. So I'm just going to do a really quick white speech bubble. Okay, so I've got my speech bubble. However, I want to give it a drop shadow. That's what your styles are good for. I want to have a little bit of a different drop shadow. I want to have a single stall solid line drawn around it automatically that I never have to draw by hand. It's helpful for things like that. Uh, I typically just make all my styles by hand and then copy them over page by page. So, I mean, should probably have this open at some point. I'm going to put you beside my adjustments. And then to turn off the visibility, I'm just going to turn off the effects, and it gives me my normal, old, or you can right-click and clear layer style, and it gets rid of it completely.
Oops. Um, I'm not going to get too much into tablet settings um, because it, it varies so much from tablet to tablet. And I'm apparently one of the few who still use old school Wacom and prefer old school Wacom and not a computer screen one. I don't know. I'm weird. Um, everyone has their own preference. But Wacom Desktop Center for Mac has your... You can go into... De -de 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 -de. That's not what I want. Why was it not showing? Okay, so I clicked on my devices. That's what it is. And you get your pen setting, your express key setting, on-screen con on control setting, documentation. Gives you all the fun stuff. Um... In Mac, when it opens up the settings panel, it's actually in your... Hope I don't got anything. Yeah, no, okay, I'm good. <laughs> opens up in your normal settings. Um, I'm trying to remember the last time I did this in Windows. And I'm struggling a little bit. And I can't quite remember what the screens look like. Um, and then it gives you the option for your tablet. So on mine, I have four screens or four buttons at the top that I can say, hey, I want this to be a right click. Or I want this to be a keystroke, which is on your keyboard. Um, precision mode, it kind of zooms in for you. Uh, navigation, so you can have it say, oh, I want it to scroll, f scroll up, scroll down. I want it to zoom in or zoom out. Uh, switch application or go to my desktop. Uh, Launchpad is the programs, the My Programs version. Ma uh, my Programs for Macintosh. There we go, that one. Uh, I don't typically use on-screen controls because it brings up a little, little doodad that you then have to select stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's not really for me. Um, some applications can override your tablet. Uh, when I was using an Intuos that had, it essentially had a wheel on the side of the tablet, I let Photoshop decide, okay, that's going to be my zoom, this one's going to be uh, my eyedropper tool, or you can do disabled or default. Um, someone might have to let me know uh, if it's like Windows, or if Windows is like this one where you can set Programs specific, because um, I do have programs specific. I have everything except for my drawing programs as show desktop, switch application, scroll up, scroll down, simply because I accidentally hit these keys like nobody's business. <laughs> so I don't want want to accidentally be hitting stuff that I don't mean to be in Photoshop, and it's in a very awkward spot at the top of my tablet, not on the side. Uh, your pen, you can say zoom, right click, shows you which of these. Your tip feel, I generally keep her dead center. Um, I don't mess around with these, but feel free and try it for, change it and then say try it for 15 minutes on both the farthest ones. And then you can kind of start working your way into where your preferred area is. Um, I personally, I prefer to just kind of mold to my tool in this case, instead of trying to spend hours and hours and hours messing with it when if I go to something else, say my iPad, uh, it's going to be completely different. So I kind of just, in this case, I prefer to, to let work with my tools instead of making my tools work with me. Uh, mapping, so this is why I can't go to the edges, or go past the edges when I have Photoshop selected, because I have it set as to only show up on this screen is my entire tablet. In other programs, I have my tablet is essentially split in half, where half of it is one monitor, half of it the, is the other monitor. And you can set that with portion, monitor one, monitor two, and how much of your tablet area is it using? So I have it set to tablet area full because I want to use my full tablet. It's 
some people only use half. Uh, I think my my big intuos, I own, you could see the scratch marks were only in this little itty bitty area. Um, because I didn't have it mapped to my entire thing, I had it set to mouse mode, which is where you can scroll back and forth. Uh, as opposed to this corner of your tablet corresponding to this corner of your monitor. Uh, and then your on-screen controls, which again, I don't... I used it with my Intuos uh, 4, but I don't use it with my smaller Intuos Pro, just because it takes up too much screen and it's just trying to get to those keys at the top of my tablet where I have to reach over my other hand. Yeah, it's, that's not necessarily my thing. If it is yours, feel free, give it a try. Nothing can't hurt anything giving it a try. As you can see, I've got my Photoshop and my... Oh, almost. <laughs> set to the same thing. Sure, let's set this to... I don't really use my uh, top button much. Where is my... There it goes. And you can set your scroll speed. I like to have all my programs the same, so I don't have to do any guessing. And if you want to add a program in Mac, it gives you that option. And I always have my ta this tablet. I can go wireless, but I find there's a very, very terrible lag, so I tend to not. Mine's always plugged in. And since I have... Oh, actually, uh -huh, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to set this to full for a couple seconds since my trackpad is working. And now you'll see that I don't get stuck on the edge of the screen. And I'm going to uh, adjust this just a little bit. Let's pull that up. And I'm going to put you over on my other monitor because that's where I like you. Yes. And now that I've got that fixed, I can return my screen area to uh, monitor 2. And then when I go back to Photoshop, now my entire tablet is my entire screen. Now, when, when you get more efficient at using your hotkeys, so like B is for brush, M is for your marquee tool. Uh, these I'll go over next Friday. Um, if you hit tab, you'll find, oh god, all of my things disappeared. Well, not really. They are still over here. Oh, right. I want to turn my ruler off because that causes a visual glitch in my program, and I don't know why. So now I can go over to the edges, and I can still get to my tools, but I have my full screen available, and I only just dis discovered this trick, so never think you know everything about your program. <laughs> um, so we have swatches, timeline, we had already closed that, tool presets. Uh, so this this kind of allows you to say I have oh it won't let me oh, there we go so I can make tool presets for my crop tool I don't normally mess around with these because I've never really found a need to and apparently there's not very many tools you can set tool presets for or sorry, that have tool presets already. It looks like you can set new ones. Eyedropper tool preset. Um, pretty much with the exception of my brush, my wet media brush, and my eraser, I find I don't... These, these settings that show up up here... I don't find they change very much, or I don't change them very much. Uh, if you think you're going to be hyper-tweaking um, and making everything just as perfect as you want it, feel free to keep this open. But I'm going to, and as you can see, I can also close it by right-clicking and close. 
If you close tab group, it will close this section. Uh, you can have auto collapse, auto show, interface options. You can get uh, really, really in depth with how your how your program looks. Um, so your application frame is your close and your minimize, your uh, expand window. That's strange. I don't know why you're asking me to record. I don't think you need to. Um, I normally leave mine on. Your options are your tool options. You are probably going to want to mess around with those at some point, so you might want to leave them on. And then your tools, that's your toolkit way over here. And then it also gives you the selecting, which if you had multiple files o open at the same time, you can jump between them. Uh, another fun thing about this trick with hitting the tab key is, okay, well, but I still want my options open. Well, you can just click options, and it'll open that back up permanently for you and still have all this stuff hidden on the sides. Say, I want, well, my navigator hit on the other side, so I do want to have that still open, so I'm just going to click on that. But it's like, oh, hey, if I wanted to make sure my layer panels never closed, well, now you're starting to get into, you might just hit tab, come back to it, open everything back up again. When you got everything laid out the way you think you want it to, you can go under workspace. New workspace, you can name it, you can set all your keyboard shortcuts, menus, toolbars. These are what I want saved in my workspace. Um, keyboard shortcuts, I will generally take a f if I find a program has something different than Photoshop, I will generally change it to Photoshop's keyboard shortcuts because that's what I always use. Um, once you get your one program that you're you're just very good at very efficient at yeah no change change your other programs make a match uh if you prefer clip studios uh keyboard settings a lot of them are going to be very similar like b is probably going to always be brush tool uh e is probably always going to be eraser tool that kind of thing it's very very rarely is, is a program going to change that <laughs> except corral <laughs> uh, I'm calling Corel paint out because <laughs> that in what world N means eraser I don't know <laughs> um, but you can do the same thing in Clip Studio you can register a workspace and then the information that will be saved in the workspace palette position shortcut settings command palette preference and unit settings And you, as you can see, Clip Paint has a lot of the a lot of the same stuff. Command bar, quick access. I don't typically. I know my shortcuts for these, so I don't typically use them. Color wheel, which is that guy up there. Color slider, which is your either your RGB. Uh, hue light saturation, which in Photoshop is hue brightness and saturation, or CMYK, which is your print colors. Uh, intermediate color, approximate color. So this gives you all your blocks of different color based on your whites, your black, and then a primary color. So you can set. Let's go with blue just so you can see it. And then you can pick all of the colors in the immediate color family. Um, approximate color to kind of see it changing over there instead of on your black and white scale. Although you can set it on your black and white scale. 
can set it on your how much gray is in it and how versus how much color. Uh, those I don't typically use because I just use my little my little wheel. Uh, color history is all the various colors you've clicked on the last little bit. Um, I have my swatches set because I like to have all of my programs set up at about the same thing. Uh, your layers, your search layer. So if you had to, if you have a lot of layers and you want to find a specific type of layer, you can do that. My lord, <laughs> that's uh, that's you might need that when you first start out and you end up with six million layers and you forgot to name a single one of them. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Don't worry. Animation cells, uh, so how transparent your previous cell is to your next one, so you can make sure you have some continuancy going. Timeline is the same as the other one, as the other program. Your navigator, let me close these out for a second and shrink that. So your navigator is the same as in uh, as Photoshop. I generally use mine just to look, but navigator you can click and move you can use your navigator to zoom in if you don't have an easy method to zoom in there's also your zoom in zoom out uh, clip studio paint also allows you to rotate photoshop i do not believe does yeah no photoshop won't doesn't it just lets you zoom and move stuff around uh pan panning is what that's called uh, you could fit to navigator fit to screen so there's your fit to screen. Apparently my fit to navigator isn't going to change any. Reset your rotate. Uh, what percentage. So your pixels. Uh, when we were talking earlier about having 4,000 pixels. My screen resolution is, I think, 19, 1920 by something? 1,000? 1, 1K or something? So it's fitting each pixel of the image to my screen resolution as opposed to looking at the entire image. Um, sub... Ooh, what's sub view? <laughs> I don't even know. I'll have to look into that one. Not entirely sure what sub view is. Uh, your history. So again, you can go back. Uh, you can click on a specific point in your history in Photoshop, give me one second to, uh, Ooh, that's not going to work, because, <laughs> oh, and I closed my settings already, drat. Um, okay, well, I, I already know I have this saved, so I just want to bring up, it's going to take a second, oh, reset essentials. Uh, and give me my history. Uh, Photoshop allows you to take a screenshot. So if you go back to here and you take a screenshot along the top, it'll remember that point and save. Even if you go past your 25, it will take you back to this. However, when you save and close out of the file, it does delete these. So you d it's not... A perfect previous state um, but it's 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 not terrible um, this little plus button it literally just made a new file based on where I was in my history uh, don't save please so you could go back to your deselect and you're like hey I might want to work from here instead of from where I was you can select new file and then go back and keep working. Try a couple things out. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on GIMP or Sci if either of those have have them. Uh, Sci, I, I haven't used Windows for a very long time, so I'm sorry on that. I have heard lots of good things on Sci. Um, and GIMP I've never, never used either, so I'm not entirely positive on those two. And somebody might need to correct me 
on uh, on whether either of those have any of these options. Uh, I know Procreate is a lot simpler in what options you have. There is also Clip Paint Studio for... Oops, I didn't mean to hit cancel. I meant to hit don't save. Um, Clip Paint Studio, or Clip Studio Paint. Clip Paint Studio, that one. I'm sorry, it's been a very long day. Uh, is available for iPad. And it does have all of the same options. You can arrange your windows whichever ways you want. Uh, I'm just pulling up my iPad right now. Just so I can... Yep. Yeah. You can have a workspace set up. So if you want to have a specific setup for your... Um, for your iPad or if you hook your iPad up to another monitor, because that is also a thing you can do. You can set it up for two monitor setup or one monitor setup. I used to do that with my laptop uh, quite, quite often. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on my streaming where I have, oh, apparently I had this tucked over here. So this is normally how I have my screen laid out. Um, clip paints, got your auto actions, which, yeah, so it's, it's very similar to, uh, Photoshop's actions, um, where you can expand the selection by five pixels, bright colors emit a light, bevel and emboss, uh, so layer styles and all that fun stuff. Photoshop, come here. There we go. Um, oh, actually, haha, <laughs> I was doing clip paint, wasn't I? Uh, item bank, so your 3D items, if I'm not mistaken, is what that is. Maybe not, because it doesn't have anything in it, and I sure do know that I have lots of, lots of items already saved in there. Uh, materials, so color pattern, a background, monochromatic pattern, uh, manga materials, image materials, illustration. Oh, okay, so uh, Photoshop calls these um, panels, and Clip Paint calls them palettes. I just discovered out or I just discovered, so hide title bar would get rid of this, fix the width of the palette dock, so this wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to expand or contract this just by clicking and dragging, which is kind of helpful if you're like me and you do these thousand paint strokes. Oh, <laughs> I don't think my thing like that. Uh, you do these thousand paint strokes and you find you accidentally click and drag stuff, well, you might want to lock it. Uh, just to save my poor, poor computer that has been requesting an upgrade for ages, but I just haven't, I haven't been able to afford it. Uh, I'm going to close out Clip Paint. Are you actually going to quit, or did I misclick on something? Ah, uh, you'll quit. Okay, so we've gone over all of our panel layouts, uh, different file types, when you save, how you open up a new thing, your guides, grids, and rulers, and now the fun raster versus vector, and I'm sorry that this is such a dry, dry video. <laughs> the other ones I swear we're going to have a little bit more fun with. Um, so what is raster and vector? Well, raster is an image where each, so when we had our yeah, pixels, it remembers what color each individual pixel is um, all the way along. So it'll remember that this is white, 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 black, white, or gray, 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 gray. It'll remember all that. It remembers all these gradients. 
and it does so quite easily by just remembering what each pixel is. Now the downside to rasterized images um, is if you go to scale it, you can only scale it so much before you get that dreaded pixel blur. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take this one. So as you see when I size it up, oh boy, oh boy, does that ever start blurring out on the edges. And that's because your program is trying to guesstimate what these new pixels are, what color they're supposed to be, um, because they didn't exist before when it was smaller. So you can you can only go go so so big, and the same can be said for uh, if you were to go to image size, and if you were to change your resolution, say from seventy two to two hundred, you would get some massive massive blurring, blurring in that as well. <clears throat> so that's one of the cons to raster images. The pros to raster images is you can have gradients, you can have painter like effects. Uh, because a vector essentially takes, let me get you a path, actually, let me just cheat and select you, right click, and where's my make work path? Oop. Which one do I want? This one. Okay, so this is my vector. And like when you're back in school messing around with your scientific calculator and typing fun things into the X and Y to make your fun little curves, your vector is taking this point to this point, and it's applying a mathematical equation to get this precise curve. So no matter how big or how small you make it, it will always be that same shape. You're never going to get that explosion of pixels, because it's mostly concerned about the shape. It's concerned what angle it's at. How straight, or, uh, how straight it versus how curved it is, where it's connecting. Um, vector images, you can also... Let me... It, it, it. Oh, actually, I don't know if that's going to work or if it's going to let me do that. Ah, define custom shape. Oh, no, that did not work the way I wanted it to. I don't, as you can tell, I don't work with uh, uh, vector images very often. This is more of an Adobe Illustrator uh, kind of thing. Yeah, see, that's still not doing what I, I want to make a pit. Want to make a a shape, but it's not letting me make a shape out of it. Um, so the bad thing about vectors is you can only have a solid color on the inside and it can figure out what size of a line and what color of a line you want the actual shape or wireframe, as some people call it, to be. Um, you can't have any kind of smooth gradients, vectors just... They don't, they don't handle that. There is no mathematical equation for it to, to figure out your paint strokes, how you do, uh, how you paint certain things, how you want it to gradiate. Um, some, some more advanced programs will mix uh, a raster image, which is your gradient, over top of your vector shape to create that effect. But for the most part, it can't do any of that stuff. So, I mean, if you're doing cell shading, if you're doing um, little sprites, your vectors will work fine. For graphic design, vectors are a must because if you're putting something on a business card and something on a billboard, <laughs> you want that to be able to scale properly without anything distorting and without anything, any colors blowing out, and without your programs guesstimating what colors things are on, in the in-between. Um, whereas 
with rasters, you generally know, okay, what print am I doing? Um, if I'm putting stuff on the web, it has to be a raster image because each individual uh, browser would need some way to read a vector image, and it simply doesn't have that versus being able to go, okay, pixel one is this color, pixel two is this color. So when, when you put stuff on the web, you're always going to be using a raster image. Um, text is a vector image. So this is where we kind of start mixing the two. No, I don't want you. I want... So I've got my, hey, hi. If I want to shrink it and make it this size instead, and let's put it above the speech bubble and... So there's my hey, hi. I've made it really small, so now if it was a raster image, I would never be able to make it bigger again. However, it takes... It knows the mathematical equation for the edges of each and every one of these little little letters. So no matter what size I make it, it will not blur out. Ever. <laughs> um, if you take a PSD and from Photoshop and say put it in clip paint, it will automatically rasterize your text, which now I can't edit it. I'd have to make a whole new whole new one. Um, and if I need to size it up, well, there's my blurry pixels. Where it's guesstimating at the edges because it doesn't know how crisp it's supposed to be. All of these pixels are suddenly added on there. Didn't mean to hide my background layer. There you can see my, my speech bubble blurred out there because it wasn't a raster, a raster layer. But I can take this selection that I had made out of it and turned it into a path. I can make use this instead and I can even name my work path. We'll go more into detail on on how to do all these next Friday and I'm looking at the time and I'm like oh man I've made too good of time I am far early. Uh, that's okay this one might be the short one because we're gonna start having a lot more fun <laughs> next week. And I want to make sure that this is white. As you can tell, I don't work with these very often. Oh, there we go. Uh, if you go into your paths tool, it's this key will fill. Then this one will put a line. It will use this to trace whatever shape you've selected it. As you can see, <laughs> because I made it off of a raster layer, it's not the perfect circle I would have liked, but it's not blurry anymore. So you can make your own speech bubbles in paths, save a bunch of them, copy them over, Make them whatever size you would like, adjust them. Uh, Clip Studio Paint, oh, I already closed it. Uh, Clip Paint has options already pre built for those and they pre space for you because it is specifically made for uh, comic panels, manga panels, all that fun stuff. Whereas I find Photoshop is just a little bit nicer for, for painting. And I don't typically mind making my own speech bubbles or drawing them by hand. So that is your very quick and dirty lowdown on raster versus vector. Um, next week we're going to go over 
as many of these tools as I can fit <laughs> in a couple hours. Uh, sometimes I'll assign homeworks at the end of night, the nights, but I'm not going to do that tonight other than which of the two raster vector would you like to look at more? Uh, I know I'm personally probably only going to be using raster, but I can play around a little bit in vector later on. So dirty. <laughs> Howdy. See, and I'm looking at my time and I'm going, I am, uh, hello to Paranoid Pop Rocks for when I put this video up. Um, <laughs> I'm already looking at my time and I've made way too good of time and I'm actually mostly done. <laughs> Uh, I went over various different um, how your your new file screen, how to set up your Photoshop. Uh, if I recall, you use Procreate, which Procreate doesn't really give you much options for setting up your your workspace or guides or anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you've just been watching, I hope it's been at least somewhat informative. And I have been known to Bob Ross and put people to sleep. <laughs> yeah, Procreate. Um, in, in some of the, uh, especially in the next one, I know I'll be going over a couple of the... Procreate using reference layers and clipping layers, uh, but for Procreate, for anybody who who's at home using it, I, about the only thing that you can edit with your your workstation is your palettes and where your brush size uh, and eyedropper tool um, and hardness simulator are placed on your screen. It's you you really can't mess anything up. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, this one was dry, and I was trying to think of how to make it a little bit less dry, and I'm like, uh, no, it's it's going to be throwing around a lot of terminology because <laughs> you have to have one dry one every now and again. But um, hopefully that goes over people's heads. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm not going to assign any kind of real homework other than. If you if you see anything that messes around or met, uh, that I didn't mention, oh, and I see my stream decided it was going to halt on me. And I'm not entirely sure why. Um, not yeah, I'm not going to assign any kind of homework. Mess around, see if I missed anything. If I have, feel free to shoot me a question, and I will see everybody next week.